so my collaborator and and walking mate, Christine Brubaker, is not here tonight. So um, rather than regale you with with stories from the journey and the people we stayed with, or um, some of the other things, I, I thought I would try to bring her into the room. So I've just picked uh, a section of the text, which is probably in a ink machine right now, which is a very exciting thought, um, uh, and share and bring her into the room a little bit tonight. And uh, you know, we call this Seventh Cousins and an auto mythography because um, it's a lot about the stories we tell and and the myths we make. And so this is what I'm about to read to you, um, true and untrue. One story about Christine. Okay, well, I learned about this woman, Christine. She walked for 700 kilometers over 30 days. She had the idea and she just decided to do it, just committed to doing it on the spot. She was obviously looking for something, not in the usual way of trying to find out who she was or trying to make peace after some traumatic event, but looking to satisfy some desire inside of her, to really be able to say that she'd left the noise of our contemporary world, the city, the social media, the hype about anything. She didn't want the walk to have to mean anything other than that she did it. And she was really proud of herself for doing it, and she knows she'll remember it forever. But she also knows it wasn't all she wanted it to be because it wasn't the right time for her. She did it because she said she would do it and because she truly wanted to do it because it was an incredible thing to do. But she'd been traveling a lot for work and she was the mother of two young children and while part of her deeply wanted to be on this journey, part of her was screaming, why aren't you home? And not because of some bullshit about how mothers aren't supposed to go away, no, not at all, but because she needed to be at home at that time for her. And here she was, doing this once-in-a-lifetime thing that was happening at the wrong timing for her. And she fully committed to doing it, and it was incredible, and it really did mean something to her. But she wasn't going to mythologize the wonder of it because, in the end, it wasn't what she needed. So now she never says, I wish I was back on the walk today, or what a remarkable time in my life, because the truth was, she was just glad to get home. The part about the questions. What draws us to another person? What are the stories I repeat? To what extent do we measure ourselves against someone else's normal? Do adventures activate desire and is that a pleasant feeling in everyone? Why did they swim the Niagara River at the further end rather than the closer end? What kind of socks do you think they wore? Can they eat a meal without praying or is that against themselves? Do you like it when someone worries about your spiritual life? Can a person practice gratitude without dedicating it to a god? What are the birds doing right now? Do you know how much time a kilometer is? Do you have an innate sense of direction? Do you ever get lost? Am I really such a grouch? Am I too much? Did I hurt your feelings? Was I being thoughtless? What did you say? Should we take the bridge? Should I look at the map? Do you need an Advil? Should we cross the road? Can you look at this rash? Do you really want to carry that beer? Did you see that? What is a story? Why do I resist it? Why do I want it? What are the stories I repeat? What is the difference between your version of a story and my version? Can you leave the room? Thank you.